Hey everybody, I have not been on in a minute. I've been very busy between my school, my daughter, co-parenting, finding a youth group for my 11 year old, and just getting ready for a new season. So I apologize that I have not been consistent and the Lord has been quiet. I did receive a dream recently about Trump and I'm on here to share that with you guys. Um, but overall, everything is going good and there's a new church that I found and it was so the Lord. He connected me to a church um, through my daughter's former classmate. She used to go to a private Christian school. Now she's in the public school. And it was just by, um, it seemed like it was just happenstance, but obviously it was God. And it's a really good fit for her. She loves youth group. I just wanted to plug her into a really good support system because it's tough in the public schools. She's the only child and she is, she has, um, she has a lot of stress because of me and her dad's situation. Obviously, I'm not with her dad. I've never been with him. I was never married to him. Some of you guys know the turbulence of that situation and the Lord, I know he is working on that situation. Even when I feel like he's not, we have really come a long way, Julia's dad and I. Julia's dad is an unbeliever, so um, it makes things even more difficult in an already really stressful situation. So, um, so I've been dealing with that and doing what the Lord's calling me to do. Like He is so amazing, you guys. And I just, uh, I so badly want to get into it, you know, and share with you guys some of the things the Lord showed me prior to this breakthrough. And um, I don't feel led to share that right now. And maybe I will, you know, later on, but just not right now. Where I'm at right now, okay, so I'm definitely entering a new season uh, with my family dynamic, and I am just taking steps as the Lord is leading and not rushing ahead of Jesus. Like, I don't want to get too far ahead. I don't want to get ahead at all. I just want to do what I am called to do. Otherwise, I will get into trouble. Have you guys ever experienced that where you, um, it's almost like you're so excited for the breakthrough because you see what's happening. You see what's, what the Lord is doing. And sometimes we get ahead. Even if it's just by a few steps, we get ahead of the Lord and things don't work out. And it, you know, and we wonder why it didn't work out because it looked like God was doing something. Well, a lot of times it's because we are like, we are not following the Lord. We are running ahead of him. And we have to be very careful of that because we don't want to get into our flesh. We don't want to act out the desires of our heart if they are not his desires, if it's not his will. So patience is key in these situations, when, especially when you're dealing with a very difficult, high conflict situation. And it doesn't have to be a co-parent or a spouse. It can be a child, <laughs> you know, child rearing can be very difficult, especially in the teenage years. Um, it can be a family member, a mother, you know, or a father. 
it can be a, a really close friend that you've had in your life for years and um, you know we don't always want to run away from relationships and you have to be very careful on that one with the Lord you know you have to really know what is in his will because that can be very confusing you know to our own minds but to, with God there are, is no confusion so and that is why we need to go with go to our God about relationships and circumstances or dealing with a difficult person that we love or dealing with a difficult person that you cannot detach from you cannot separate from it I believe these are one of the most challenging scenarios in our human lives. It's relationships. Not all relationships are so, you know, easy. And there's just so many challenges, you know, to, to p the people in our life. And it leads us to question God a lot, you know, like, why is this person here? Like, how is this glorifying you? Because I feel that my life would be a lot better with this person gone, you know, like not gone, not dead, but you know, gone with the person separated from you. Like if you just let them, you know, if the Lord would just let them go their own way, things would be good. And we think these things, but I believe, and I know so many of you guys would agree that God uses difficult people to, in our life to test us, to try us, um, to try our patience. And it's a testing to see what we do with that frustration. Do we go and gossip? You know, do we go... Um, and slander the person? Do we become accusatory? What do we do? You know, and a lot of that is God revealing something that needs to be ejected out of you. Like it, like those things are not of God. And if we have, you know, bitterness and unforgiveness in our hearts towards somebody, that we know we should not, even though this person has trespassed against you, even though things are not right, even though a lot of things like pain and suffering and just you name it, you know, going through the mud with this person and the Lord just know, the Lord uses that situation. He's not wasting it. It's not for nothing, but wow, does it take a lot of courage to keep going and to not give up and to, to keep praying for that person. So um, that is basically what I've been going through in my heart. That This is the situation. This is the place the Lord has me you know, evaluating my own self. The sanctification process, it's ongoing, it's forever, you guys, until we meet the Lord in the air, until we are absent from the body and with the Lord, will these things pass away. But while we are here on earth in the flesh, given to basically temptation on a daily basis we are going to be tried we are going to be um, we're going to feel like we're in a rut but that is when it this is when it's so critical to know that the Lord walks with you and he's going to see you through all right, so things are good, and the Lord's doing a lot of new things, and I'm excited because I need something new in my life. Things have been very stagnant for 11 years in my life. You know, I 
Didn't know Julia's dad very long until I got pregnant. I was living in my sin, and the Lord confronted me when I was six weeks pregnant. I gave my life over to Jesus. I surrendered, and I stopped my sin. That took quite some time to actually stop those sins, those habitual sins. And he's still, of course, working on me. And that will never stop. Like I said, sanctification is a long process. We are not going to be done until he says we are done, which is basically when we give our last breath. So um, I separated from Julia's dad. I came home to live with my mom, and I found a good career um, to work for some years, for about almost nine years, to raise and support my daughter while living at home. And I'm still at home. Nothing has changed. I have not married. Um, that just has not been a thing, I guess. Like, I don't know. I definitely have given up all the dating stuff and you know, the Lord just really had me focusing on my daughter. Like, like I sacrifice everything for her and I'm present with her and helping her through a lot of emotional turmoil that she has experienced in the last 11 years and we're doing okay. And praise God because she's been through a lot. And only God has seen her through. And I have advocated for her. I have stood on truth. And I have confronted my enemies. And the enemy retaliated greatly, but the enemy was not successful. Praise Jesus. The enemy was not su successful in taking away my daughter. And actually where we are right now is a really good place. It's probably the best place we have been in in years. And, and things are okay. All right, so with all that said, um, I wanna move on to the dream. I had a dream about Trump and um, so I'll go ahead and share that. Okay, so I'm in a building and I see Trump. He's in a small office room and he is, he has a pen in his hand and he has his head kind of like down like this and he's writing something, like he's signing forms, he's writing something out, he's doing work. And I'm sorry, you guys, I'm just so hot. It's so humid in Las Vegas, like I'm dripping sweat. And I'm trying to decorate for fall. Um, Julia decorated the fireplace mantle. It's gorgeous, um, but it's like over 100 degrees and high humidity and we're not used to like the humidity over here and the house is like at 81 degrees because our AC unit is 20 years old probably needs a fine tuning or just completely replaced uh, it needs a replacement but we're just doing the best we can Whew. so anyways um, so I see Trump and he is um, he's focused on his work and he is just writing away with his pen. Now, I am really just a spectator in this dream. I'm no one to Trump. Um, I'm not any given person. I am a spectator and the Lord is just trying to show me the message that he's trying to relay. So, um, what I have, okay, so, I see him in the room writing, okay? And he's at a small desk, keep that in mind. I believe that's significant. 
It's a small little office room, nothing extravagant, nothing special, nothing fancy. And all of a sudden, I have these pair, I have this pair of fake, uh, almost like a novelty item in my hand, and it's a pair of glasses. They're plastic, they look like fun glasses that a child would play with. And um, the glasses, interestingly enough, have the jail cell bars over where the eyes are, okay? So um, that's significant as well. And on top of the glasses, okay, so when you're wearing glasses, so on the top part of the frame, it says, Jesus bailed you out, hence the jail cell bars on the eyeglasses and everything's plastic they're not real glasses jesus bailed you out and then on like the other side of the eyeglass there was another message to it i completely did not retain it, it i guess it wasn't meant for me to retain the full message um but i clearly remember Jesus bailed you out. And so I'm holding these glasses, okay? And I go into the doorway of Trump's small office and he looks up and he stops writing and he just looks up at me and I show him the glasses and I'm like, Trump, do you see what it says on the glasses? And he's looking and he starts to squint like this. And he's like trying to make out the message. And then he's like, he just starts shaking his head like, like that, like, no. Like, I don't get the message. Like, I'm not comprehending. And it's like I wanted to spell it out for the man, you know? And I said, well, look. And I'm like, Jesus bailed you out. And he just put his head down and continued working. Okay, so I didn't press the message on him. Like, I didn't go, f I didn't press it further, you know? Like, I wasn't persistent. Like, I was persistent, but not to the point of um, disrespecting him. And so I took the pair of glasses and over to my right-hand side, um, where I was standing, was actually a larger office with a larger desk, a big desk, like for the big boss. But the desk was empty. And I placed the glasses, those fake glasses, onto the big desk. And I said to myself, I'm going to place the message here so that when Trump sits at the big desk, he is going to read the message. It's going to be before the man. Like it's going to be the me that message is going to be clear as day to him. Like he's going to glance over because he will be at that big desk doing big things. <laughs> and he's going to glance over and take notice of those glasses that are there on the table. And he's going to see the message and he, and it's like I was praying that he would receive it, that he would receive the message. And of course, you know, again, to reiterate, um, to be, you know, I just want to repeat it to be clear. On the glasses, it said, Jesus bailed you out. And I vaguely remember on the other side, so blah, blah, blah. Like, Jesus bailed you out, so... It's like he needed, he had an instruction to do, like for God. He had to do something for God, like a calling. There was a calling on his life. And Jesus bailed him out. What did Jesus bail Trump out of? That is for you guys to figure out. I'm not going to just, I'm not going to dissect this message, um, but... I feel it's pretty obvious. 
Anyways, um, I feel that that larger desk is presidency. It's empty right now, but I knew that Trump would be sitting in the big seat doing big things. But when he gets to that big seat, that message is going to be before him. He will see the message. Will he receive it? And this is what the Lord wants us Christians to pray for, for Trump, that he receive salvation, that he receive the message of the gospel, that he understand, that he would understand that God bailed him out of hell. When we become saved, we just got bailed out. We got bailed out of that condemnation of what we deserve because we all are deserving of hell. We all were once lost, but when we are found, we have Jesus and we have salvation. And that's the good news that we don't have to suffer hell. We do not have to go to hell. We live with Jesus eternally. We're with Jesus when we pass through this earth. We are with Jesus even now. And he bailed us out, you guys. Like, Jesus bailed us out. He bailed us out of hellfire. So, and also, you know, whew, we can actually look back on our lives and we can actually pinpoint exactly in our lives where if something happened to us, if death was upon us prior to receiving salvation, at that time in your life, we can pinpoint the time in our lives that we were in our sin. And that if anything happened, or you remember, I'm sure there's so many, so many of you guys who have a near-death experience kind of scenario, like a some kind of an experience, you know, where death almost met you, but the Lord covered you with his protection because he knows who, he knows who his people are and he, he protects his people. And that in itself is also a way of being bailed out we're preserved like he the bailing out is being preserved for you know to to be with jesus we are being preserved we are bailed out of condemnation and hell because once you go there you can't come back you can't come back out of hell it's permanent it's for eternity and that was the message and that is the message to trump Jesus bailed you out. So what are you going to do with that? It's like that, you know, like, what are you going to do? What are we going to do with that? What are we going to do with it? And this is not to say, and don't twist up my words saying that I'm talking about some work salvation. This is not what I'm talking about. I am talking about being in thankfulness for what the Lord has already done, what he is doing, and that you are chosen and you are called, you know, what are we doing with our calling? Like, what are we doing in our daily life? Are we really grasping it, you know? And Trump, I believe, with most recent events, um, it was a wake-up call for him. But is he really grasping it? Is he really grasping the truth? Is he really holding on to it? Is he really, you know, receiving the truth? And I know the Lord is obviously working on him. And I'm not here to say that, you know, that he is I don't even know what I want to say. I'm not here to really, I'm not here to judge Trump or to talk about 
most recent events. I'm not here to really, you know, say much about him. I don't know much about Trump. I don't know him personally. But what I do know is that the Lord wants his soul. And what I do know is that God has a calling on his life. Even as an unbeliever, God already knows the calling he has placed on our lives. Like, he already knows. He already knows the path that we are going to take. He already knows who, what sheep are his prior to going out and finding the lost sheep. Like, he already knows. So we don't have to worry about, you know, being spectators and putting our judgments on Trump or anybody for that matter. But it's all about salvation. It's all about people receiving the message. It's about people receiving the gospel, especially our leaders, because I do somehow deep within my spirit, I feel that if Trump does get elected, it's some kind of a grace and mercy on our nation. And it will not come without trials and tribulation, but it's still God's mercy and grace. And that's a good thing. And so let's pray for him. And let's pray that his eyes be opened. And is it a coincidence that the Lord showed me these glasses, you know? Meaning seeing through you know, seeing through the truth, like seeing what is truth, seeing through what is lies. And, but just keep in mind, those glasses had the jail cell bars on the eyes, where the eyes, um, where the lenses are. There were bars. But on top, it says, Jesus bailed you out. He removes those bars and allows us to receive and see in truth. Like we need to be able to see in truth and and Trump needs to see the truth so he can receive the truth because when you see it, how can you not receive it? So I just pray for Trump that he will receive the message in Jesus' mighty name when he gets to the big desk. So keep him in prayer, you guys. Be obedient to the Lord. And um, I'll be on here again soon. Thank you for um, asking if I'm okay. Sorry that it took uh, a minute. But I had a transition from the old season to the new season. And... um, It can take up my energy, you know, but it's, it's a good thing. And I just pray that the Lord continues to, to provide to us the energy that we need to do his will, especially in situations that you feel are, um, really unbearable or uncomfortable people that steal your energy. Um, but people that you need to deal with, you know, like there's no running away from it. Um, you just keep praying the Lord's protection over your life, over your children, and just know and trust that he will see you through. And he will give you the strength that you need to do his will, because his will will be done. All right. Amen, you guys. And um, write in on the comments uh, about what you think about the dream. And go ahead and share an experience that maybe you had, you know, that you've recently been in with changing seasons or something encouraging, you know, that the Lord is um, doing in your life. You know, do you see breakthroughs? Do you see, and they really do start very small. And he will show you signs. Like he showed me so many signs before I even saw this happening, before it became, you know, real life. He first showed me in the spiritual, and he gave the promise before it happened. We just need to reach out and and grab that promise and just grab a hold of it and just know that he has got it. In his timing, he's got this. He's got you. He's got those people in your life, and everything is going to work out according to his will. 
as long as you remain obedient and also repent because Jesus is coming soon. Stay ready. Bye. Love you guys. Bye.